I want to focus in this video a little bit more on a specific term you might come across when working with 3D application, and that is the term of global illumination. Now, when we have a look at the light in the real world, then you probably know already that um, the light will bounce from one object to another. So if, if you have sunlight which comes through your window and it goes to one of your walls, then it will bounce from that wall into your room, to another wall and so on and so forth. So this is something which will happen in real life and this is something which actually isn't that easy to replicate in a 3D render engine. So it takes a lot of render effort to calculate the realistic scattering of light in your scene. But there is a way to do this and that's what the term global illumination stands for and means that in your scene the global illumination will be factored in, will be calculated and thus a more realistic um, rendering will appear. So let's actually have a look at a scene to make that a little bit more um, graspable in what would the rendering look like if we would not have this kind of global illumination um, <clears throat> effect going on. So I'm going back here into a very simple um, interior scene. We have three windows in here and I have a Corona sun um, at the outside <clears throat> of my scene, sorry, <clears throat> to uh, shine light into our scene. So in the Corona settings, we can actually under global illumination, there you find this term also, um, change the mode in which Corona shall render your scene. And there's also a nice way if you want to do preview renderings to save some render times, for example. So we have on the one hand the GI mode, the global illumination mode, and on the other hand the global illumination solver. To quickly cover what's in here, so we have dif different options we can pick from, uh, basically different algorithms uh, in which way Corona sh should render and calculate the global illumination. Um, in pretty much any case, you can just leave this, this to your UHD cache and we cover the GI solver thing uh, also a little bit when we talk about rendering specifically. So on the left side here, we have the GI mode. We have none, single bounce and full multiple bounces. And this is ex exactly what we like the GI to do to calculate multiple bounces of light in our scene. So let's see what would happen if we would only calcula calculate in the direct light from the outside. So here's the rendering. As you can see, it's pretty dark. We don't have any skylight in the uh, or uh, sky on the outside, so we only have the sunlight coming in. And as you can see, we only have light here in the area where the light hits our room directly. So this is what would happen if we have no global illumination at all. So now let's turn on the single bounce. And as soon as we have that activated, you can see that we now get a little bit more of light coming here in on the roof because of the light, which is reflected here from the floor upwards uh, yeah, to the ceiling. So this is all or still pretty dark. Okay, I have the exposure also very, uh, very down. So let me turn that up to zero. Okay, much brighter now as you can see. Um, yeah, but you can see it's still pretty dark back here. Um, and yeah, let's find out what happens when I turn then the full global illumination calculation on. And as you can see now, you get now a much more even distribution of light in, your, in the scene because now the light will be reflected from every wall to each other and um, it will take basically every light bounce into account. Um, of course, there's a limit of light bounces which will be calculated. So if you go into performance settings, you could all set that up further. But the nice thing about Corona Render is everything is set up in a way that it works for most of the cases and you don't have to set up anything. So when you're working with the default render engine in Cinema 4D or Redshift, you can have well, you have much more settings to, to set up, which gives you more freedom and 
more performance tweaks maybe um, but I like it in the way that way that I don't have to care about render settings so much um, yes so that's pretty much um, the thing I like to talk about maybe one thing now if we would add now also the skylight on the outside you can see then that the light distribution gets even more um, like realistic because now we also have the skylight from the outside which will um, go into our room and illuminate the room even further. One thing you can notice here as well if I go back to just calculating the single bounce here um, the render time will actually increase a little bit um, because in this kind of scenario where we have the interior scene and there's not many light sources other than this, the sunlight, um, the render engine actually has quite difficult time to get rid of the noise because of there's only like one light source illuminating the scene and there are not enough light information to get rid of this noise um, quickly. So when I go back to the other setting and Let's have a look at the stats here. So we're rendering now for about 40 seconds. Um, and we have eight passes and you see it's still pretty noisy. So if we go to full now again, and you can already see that the passes go a bit faster now. And the image which we get is also noise free or less noisy in a short amount of time. So um, the more light you have in your scene, basically um, the faster render times will be, although more light sources will not necessarily um, increase your render time. So there's kind of a um, yeah thing you have to, to take into account. So you don't want to have too many light sources in your scene, but you uh, want to have one light source which gets a lot of light into your scene basically that's the idea behind that all right as you can see now we're about one minute in and the image is pretty noise free we still have a bit of noise going on here but this is also something which we could fix with a denoiser <laughs> 